let me just give you a brief background what we do at Genebox. We essentially are a dry lab company. What that means in a simple language is uh, we read a lot of research papers, we write a lot of algorithms, we try and make sense of data and help you understand what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Um, in terms of services, today we are across 20 odd countries. Uh, we are a B2B company only. Uh, we offer testing in you know, uh, genomics, cancer screening, epigenetics, pharmacogenetics, microbiome, et cetera. And uh, so this will kind of, the context setting is important so that you understand on you know, why we are able to do what AI, um, or the AI branch rather. So the journey of genomics, right? So the first human genome was sequenced in 2003. And that's kind of, you know, where my interest in genomics started. I dropped out of med school and uh, went into genetics. And then ever since, there's been steady progression. And today, genomics is used right from health risk assessments to your understanding if you've inherited any disorders from your parents or your grandparents. Um, uh, it's there in preventive healthcare. Actually, the lips made my life a lot more easier after showing that video. Uh, I will have a couple of slides that overlap, and it will kind of make sense if you've already seen the video because that's a North Star. And the most interesting part is ancestry. You know, in India, we say, Are humko to pata hai where we come from, etc., which is true. I myself have a family tree. Uh, I am the 134th in my generation. So give or take 20 years for a generation, that is 2,600 years of history I have in my own house on a map. But I have zero clue where the women in the family have come from. And I'm half my dad's side and half my mother's side, right? So that's a lot of data to be crunched if you really go to see. Now, you know, we say today the world's sitting on a data mine, right? So this is just a number to give you, right, on how big 2.5 quintillion bytes of data are generated each year. Right, and um, today currently our human genome is around 3.2 gigabytes long, right? So every cell has 3.2 gigabytes of information. Now the challenge with this is when you have to replicate or reproduce this information, the way the current chemistry is, you have to produce 30 times the data at least. So at 3.2 you're looking at 100, and 100 gigabytes of DNA information for each individual, and this individual, this information is nothing but A, G, C, T in a randomized order, right? Now, out of this, you have around 20,000 genes, which is less than 2% of your, you know, the 3.2 gigabytes actually makes sense for those 20,000 genes. And within this, you have close to 4 million variants in each individual. And uh, Leslie and I share one where we've lost hair. Uh, uh, there are others which will help you determine what medicines you can take. Uh, I am gluten intolerant uh, in a way that means I don't metabolize it very well. I don't get an anaphylactic shock. I'm not allergic. Similarly, these are multiple findings. We have almost up to 400 findings that we are able to present. Along with that, I did mention the buzzword gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is essentially your second genome. And um, there are close to 2,000 identified bacteria that we find in a human gut today. And in any one of us, if you have a very healthy gut, you will have 120 odd species. And if you've got a bad gut, it's closer to 60 to 80. But we can't live without them, right? Uh, now, why is this a big data problem, right? Uh, so give you a simple scale. YouTube produces one to two exabytes of data a year, which is equal to two billion gigabytes. Now, if a few people were to get their whole genome done, by 2025, the estimated number of exabytes that were required was 40 exabytes of just genomic data. So the journey of genomics has gone from having great chemistry, great labs, to now data centers and trying to figure out hardware costs, storage costs. So to produce one GB of you know, DNA data, it used to cost $20 when I came into the industry. Today the cost is down to a $2 cost. So something that you would have paid for you know, 1.5 lakh rupees five years ago, today by the end of this year, early next year, you will pay approximately uh, 15,000 rupees for. And that is the economies of scale that's gonna disrupt. 
In Europe, there is something called as a DNA passport that has been started in Netherlands. Now, a DNA pro passport is nothing but uh, a, a document which helps you understand how many drugs can you metabolize effectively. Today, we help uh, understand 142 drugs that you could or could not consume based on your DNA. And this is where the big data problems essentially start. Now, let's look at it as, you know, an investigative journalist, right? So what we use a little bit of AI for is we collect a lot of information. Uh, we identify clues that's there. You know, there are structural variants. Sometimes there are deletions in your DNA. There's a section which is missing. Um, then we kind of build a model on top of it, and then we kind of create an you know, user input. And the North Star, which Dilip showed on his video, is something that we're very close to doing, at least on nutrition today. Uh, we, we work with close to 200 nutritionists today where from a DNA report and their basic analysis, we are able to give them a tailor-made diet plan, uh, which usually would have taken them six to eight hours to build one with all the inputs that we currently provide them. So this is the case that the lip kind of showed where a person was getting scanned and uh, they had certain ailments, certain you know, decisions had to be made. This is the blueprint for that, right? So if you see, this lady is a carrier for cystic fibrosis. She's got an adverse drug reaction to warfarin. Warfarin is a blood thinner, which is one of the most commonly prescribed medications. Uh, the ancestry composition is very important because they have more African DNA. Essentially, that means they cannot metabolize warfarin very well, and that can lead to a mortality issue, right? And then you have personally diet requirements on what's working, what's not, poor sleep pattern as per the genetics, and then you have early potential signs of cardiovascular disorder, right? So imagine this is the layer, which is the base on which the Ndilib what showed is what the rest of the world's kind of working on, and that's why genomics is a big deal. Now, similarly, gut microbiome and AI is where the whole, you'll have a trillion bacteria in your gut across 120 odd species. How they are pulled together, what will they produce, etc., is another problem to solve. And uh, let me kind of just make it a little bit more engaging for you guys and make it easier. So if you see, these are some superhero genes and microbes that we have. Uh, we have the sprint gene. I'm sure Usain Bolt has this. Otherwise, you're not able to run at that pace. Uh, you have a cholesterol fighter. We were, no matter, you've seen your friend, he's eating bhaji all day long, but cholesterol in not hai. It's because of that gene. And similarly, you have some great bacteria as well in your gut, which, you know, prevent inflammation, uh, help you with longevity, um, and weight management as well, right? Uh, so these are the technologies that Genebox works on, right? We use, extensively use machine learning. Within machine learning, we use a little bit of deep learning. Uh, we use um, predictive analytics. We also use a lot of NLP. Uh, I was talking to Dilip that, you know, an average researcher in my team used to read 100 papers a day, 100 abstracts, and then read five full pap 20 full papers and shortlist five papers. Our NLP today helps us kind of get to that number faster. So if you are in my team today, you know these are the target 20 papers you're reading. And instead of you know, selecting five papers a day, you're selecting 18 to 19 that are useful. So that's how we are leveraging AI uh, to kind of make sense out of this. And this is slide in continuation to what actually the lip showed. Is, is on a video is on a slide here that how using AI variable and genomics, you're going to get you know, hyper-personalized inputs, you know, uh, understand uh, whether you can, you know, what kind of workout should you do, what kind of cardio you should be doing, whether it is steady state, whether high intense, whether it's hit training, or low intense steady state, right? These are all the inputs you're going to be able to get out of a DNA test. But just to leave you with that, right, you know, how big a problem on data is 40 exabytes of data by 2025. So if one billion people out of the eight decided to do the genetic test, there is not enough storage on planet Earth, right? And uh, that's why we say genomics and AI are natural allies. Uh, and with that, um, kind of like to end that. Thank you so much. Um, any questions, happy to all. Couple of questions. AI in your DNA, AI and DNA, Cost. Great question, right? So there are multiple products today that you're able to do. If 
you are doing a simple screening test for your wellness, your provider should be able to give it for 10,000. But if you're doing like a whole genome today, which is the gold standard which I was talking is going to be at, you know, used to be at a lakh rupees. Probably by the end of this year, early next year, you will get an offering for 30, 35,000 rupees. But that's a once in a lifetime test. So a lot of insurance companies in the US, uh, a lot of big corporates are already paying for their employees to get this data. Um, my main thing is, if you are about the age of 40 and you're taking a medication today, please go and ask for a pharmacogenetic test. You have no idea how much value is there in that one single product for you or your family. Uh, leave you with one simple an um, analogy is, um, you've heard about her C positive in breast cancer, right? Now, if you don't test that and you take the normal conventional therapy, the mortality is 70 times higher. It's 70 percent higher, rather not 70 times, but 70 percent higher. So this is what we, you know, pharmacogenetics does. It helps you understand how your body is there, how it's designed, and what kind of drugs can it can metabolize and what it can't. And um, that's, I think, it's going to be the gold standard in healthcare moving forward.